Hey guys, welcome back to my ES64 beginners tutorial. In this video, we're gonna talk about the arrow functions. One of the most loved features of ES6 is arrow functions. When you start working with ES6, you will use arrow functions a lot. They are preferred by many developers because of the simplified syntax and the solution that it brings to the usage of the disk keyword, which we're gonna see very soon. But let's begin with the syntax change and learn what's really different between a classic JavaScript function and an arrow function. Alright, so here we have a classic function and now we're gonna turn this to an arrow function. I will leave it here so you can see what's really different. The syntax of arrow functions may take some time to get used to. It is much different than the regular function definition. To define an arrow function, you need to use a fat arrow like this instead of the function keyword. So let's do this. First of all, I add the parenthesis and then the fat arrow and then our curly braces. And let's copy this here. And now we have created our first arrow function. So this is how it looks like. Let's call this here. And as we can see, it's working. If our function has parameters, then we can write them inside the parentheses here, like p1, p2, and so on. Moreover, if the function has only a single statement that returns a value, so let's say this function returns a boolean, true, and let's log this to the console. Okay, so this function returns true, and if the function has only a single statement with a return value, then we can also remove this return keyword and also the curly braces. This will also work without any problem. So this is a much simplified version of an arrow function. As we can see, the usage of an arrow function simplifies the syntax comparing to the regular function definition. It may take some time to get used to the arrow functions, but trust me, later you're gonna find it much easier. Another important difference between a regular JavaScript function and an arrow function is how they handle the usage of the this keyword. Let's see it in this example. Here we have an ordinary employee class, which takes a name parameter. By the way, the class keyword is also a new thing in JavaScript that ES6 brings, but I will explain that later in another video. And our class has two methods, which does exactly the same thing, but with two different kinds of functions, so we can see how they handle the usage of the this keyword. Now let's create an instance of the employee class here. First employee, and let's give it a name, John Doe. And after that, we can call the functions one by one. So first employee, Let's call the first function get employee name. And after that, we will call the arrow function get employee name arrow. Okay. Now, these functions have a timeout method. This is going to delay one second, and this one is going to delay two seconds. Now, after I save this code, firstly, we should see the first one, and one second later, we should see the second one. So let's see. Now what we see is that the this keyword has worked perfectly inside the arrow function definition, but nothing gets printed inside the inside our regular old function. Now here is the thing that always developers struggle with. Why is this happening? Is that because Regular functions bind the this keyword automatically to an object, depending on where the function is being called. Since the get employee function is being called here, outside of the class, and the this keyword is defined inside, inside the class locally, we see nothing, nothing gets printed. This was a common problem of the this keyword in JavaScript, so therefore, the binding of the this keyword has changed after ES6 has brought the arrow functions. Arrow functions bind the this keyword to an object where the function has been defined rather than where it has been called. So since this function has defined inside the class and the this keyword is not going to be redefined, we can see the name without any problems. 
The usage of the, this keyword was really confusing until arrow functions, so it is really beneficial to use arrow functions to get rid of this problem. If you find my video helpful, please hit the like button. In the very next video, we will continue with the destructuring assignments.